Hi, I'm Justin Rutten. I've been a counselor here at Thurber for a good long while. And I'm Frankie Dietrich. I've been here for about as long. I don't know how many years, but camper, intern, camp counselor, all the good stuff. And I'm going to be asking Justin the Thurber Camp Counselor 13. I am going to subject you to the Thurber Camp Counselor 13. So Justin, first question, what is your favorite word? What is my favorite word? Um, Wittershins. Um, it means, it's, it's a way of describing like the movement of the moon, I think. Hmm. I'm not even positive on the definition. I just like saying the word Wittershins. How, one more time. Wittershins, try it, try it. Wittershins? Wittershins. Wittershins. Yeah. Am I saying that correctly? Uh-huh. All right, Wittershins. It, it gets your shins all wittered. It, yes, I'm going to have to look <laughs> into that more later. <laughs> Question one, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is Pepsi. I feel like that's a word that's associated with me, so I'm going to say Pepsi. What book would you recommend to read for question two? Coup by Kayla Noel. Absolutely love this book. It's her debut novel. It is about a girl named Koo. She's 10 and she's been raised by pigeons. She only speaks pigeon language. Um, and it's about her like being introduced to human society for the first time after being raised by, by pigeons. What book would you recommend to read? Merlin Sheldrake, Entangled Life. Just about how cool like fungi are. And I'm not a big like mushroom person. I hate eating them. Um, but fungi are so weird. If you don't think plants can think, you should read this book and be very scared. What would you say is your best camp counselor quality? Well, I think I'm really good at sort of building off of um, camper enthusiasm. Like people, they'll have like a really weird or crazy idea. And instead of trying to make it more manageable, I just kind of roll with it. And I think kids really enjoy that. But what would you say? is your best camp counselor quality? Mm, all of them, um, that I'm not <laughs> just in. Um, I think I'm good at like matching energies. Like, you know, if a kid's coming in and they're like super excitable, I'm like, yeah, let's go. And you know, if a kid just needs like patience, some quiet time, I don't know. Not that I'm quiet, I should never say that I'm quiet. What would you say is your worst camp counselor quality for question four? I can be super fun and excitable. I I can also be a distraction if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna say that. I'm too excitable, too fun. This one is very easy and that is that I'm incredibly loud. <laughs> um, usually at some point, um, a person that I've known for many years, either, either Meg or you has to like politely tell me in the kindest possible words to just be a little less much, and then I kind of slowly sink back into my shell. What smell do you love? And maybe this is a weird answer, like fresh gas in a car. Yeah, I can, I can. <laughs> it's like, I hate that I'm like, yep, I know what you mean. That's probably not healthy, but. Yeah, I know, that's probably doing something to me that I don't understand. <laughs> that explains so much. What smell do you love? The smell of books, whether that be like a fresh, brand new, hot off the press book or like an old antique book. Different smells, both equally amazing smells. But I'm going to guess that that answer has also been given before. So I'm going to also say Meg's Brownies. What is the best smelling book on your shelf right now? So we got like a really old Alice in Wonderland, like the complete, I don't know, complete Lewis Carroll. Let's see. Yeah, that smells good. Yeah. <laughs> you should start a YouTube channel. Mm. Review How does this book smell? smell? I'm going to review books only on smell. What smell do you hate? I I'm going to say sometimes, you know, in the middle camp, we got the middle schoolers. They're, they're a little, when all the, you know, when after they leave, <laughs> walk into a room, you're like, yeah, the middle schoolers have been here. Yeah. We've been writing, but they, they run around at lunch and they take their shoes off too much, no matter what you say. It yeah. always yeah. smells like feet, even yeah. if they've not taken their shoes off. I'm sorry to any middle school camp campers watching. I don't think anyone personally smells bad. We, we, we love you from the ankles up. Well, what smell, I guess, do you hate? My mom buys a bunch of candles 
that I like individually, but she lights them all at the same time and they just smell like a really overpowering birthday cake. Like if you just like stuck your nose into some poor kid's birthday cake. And like- I've done that multiple times. Constantly, it's like a little overwhelming. What job would you love to do when you're older? Meg's job, I'm coming for her. She better yeah. watch out. Um, yeah, if not that, I'm gonna say like owning like an old independent bookstore, like by the sea and maybe it's haunted. W- would you be the one haunting it or you would move into a pre-haunted? I'd move into a pre-haunted bookstore. It'd probably be like a children's bookstore too. Like we're gonna we're gonna make it like a creepy children's bookstore. Like it's supposed to be fun, but then there's occasionally ghosts. It's a bookstore for those kids from The Shining. <laughs> they still need to read. <laughs> um, what job would you love to do when you're older? I like the implication that I will not be doing this job. That my <laughs> days are numbered. Um, this is actually how we're telling you. Uh, <laughs> this will be your last year. Nice. What's going to be next? It's been a good run. Um, <laughs> well, I'm currently studying to be a high school English teacher. So that's like the real adult answer. But I feel like I, I'm born to be like a late night TV host. I've been telling you this for <laughs> how many years? <laughs> Number eight, what job would you hate? Anything where I have to do the same thing every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> what job would you hate? Most of them, probably. <laughs> Anything with, with, with numbers, accounting, golf, professional golfer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Does anyone get it? What is your favorite fictional hero, heroine, et cetera? Wanda, having just freshly seen WandaVision, I'm not a Marvel person at all, but her character was so well-written. Using sitcoms as a form of escapism spoke to me on a very personal level. Um, And yeah, I am gonna say that she's a hero. If anybody wants to fight me on that, I will have that debate, let me know. Who is your favorite fictional hero or heroine? The main character of the fifth season books, she goes by a bunch of different names, has a bunch of really horrible things happen to her, and still fundamentally wants to make like the world a better place for people. And I think that's really admirable. Who is your favorite for question 10? Fictional villain or villainous? I mean, I feel like I have to follow that up with Agatha. Um, amazing. But I feel like I also need like a, a separate answer too. I'm, I'm gonna do this yeah I'm just gonna say like any Steven Universe villain because they oh, always yeah. are redeemed they always you know somehow redeem them but you also like for a children's show they do such a wonderful job of being like like a f- character development I'm sorry I'm forgetting all words right now or um Zuko from Avatar same thing the actual best character development ever who is your favorite fictional villain or villainess the great mouse detective the main villain in that is like this dastardly evil detective rat called radigan and he's played by tim curry and even though i don't agree with like his morals i want that energy in my life what is your favorite part of being camp counselor other than seeing me every day which i know is your real answer um yeah definitely that (laughs) um honestly i think I mean, there's just like so much goofiness that happens every year. Like there are so many moments where I'm just like, I'm gonna remember this exact moment for like a very long time. Um, And that's just kind of special, like having, (laughs) just having a job that you, I don't know, genuinely leave, like not feeling drained, but feeling more energized in a way. Um, But also just like all the return campers, like that sounds cheesy, but seeing so many of these like kids grow up has been very cool. Yeah, it's awesome that they keep coming back and we get to see faces. So and then they become interns and then like they become eventually they'll become counselors, we'll fully corrupt them. It'll be great. Yeah, and then we just <laughs> see them as adults and crumble into dust. What is your favorite part of being a camp counselor? Every so often somebody'll just say something weird or bizarre and I will think to myself I am getting paid US dollars to facilitate this idea. Like I just freshly got out of planning a giant samurai spider war in Europe with some sixth grade graders as part of 
um, some of our writing wizards stuff. So just being able to see these incredibly complex ideas that people make with one another and being able to play like a small part in steering that is really awesome. What is your favorite camp memory? Another counselor who um, I was an intern for one time had bought Chipotle for lunch. I had an intern a couple of years later. So this was like a years long thing at this point. Um, who was a really good musician and played the ukulele really well. She wrote this incredible song about how you, you better get your interns Chipotle. Um, and that same year, we had another camper write a ukulele song that was just full of quotes from camp. So the lyrics, I still remember them. They were like, vitamin D will save your life. Um, tarantulas keep pet toads. Capricorn is my favorite vegetable. Penguins taste weird. The Uke summer in general, I think, is my favorite. What is your favorite camp memory? When a fifth grader stood up, looked me dead in the eyes, and said, this woman who shall not be named is fraudulent scum. Hands down, the greatest it has ever happened to me in my life. Can you tell me the context of that? To be fair, he was correct. Um, <laughs> this was for our um, annual like mystery that we do for our fourth and fifth graders. And to be fair, I was, I was the bad guy. It's basically like a murder mystery, but a PG version where we don't murder anybody. Um, so just a mystery. Uh, um, but I mean, he was correct. I did do it. I was fraudulent scum. My least favorite Thurber memory is wearing a fake beard for a murder mystery <laughs> and swallowing hair for like four hours afterward. All right, Justin, the final question, question number 13. If you could ask James Thurber one question, what would it be? Do you want to be goofy all the time? How do you deal with being known as, you know, the goofy guy when sometimes the world doesn't feel jokeable? How do you, how do you deal with that? I think, like, I would not so much as want to, like, ask him a question necessarily as just, like, invite him to either like open mic or town crier and just watch his reaction. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and just, I guess afterwards discuss with him, like, dude, like this is in your honor, man. Like, what do you think of all this weird stuff that we do under your name? I think it's adorable that you basically want to ask him, like, are you proud of us, dad? <laughs> that is what I hope, yes. Are you proud of us, dad? Like, you just want him to pat you on the shoulder and be like, good job. Uh, I mean, if some like if someone were to make a whole writing camp in my name, I'd be I would want to come back a hundred years later and like witness it. So I would just be interested to see what he thinks of all this. Or if he's just like, Y'all are a little weird, like what's going on? That was that was wonderful. That was unexpectedly heartwarming toward the end. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> come back, James. Tell us we're doing a good job.